Hello friends. So, we move on to the second part of uh, what to present and how and this time we are going to focus on body language to a certain extent although we will be dealing with it in a much more detailed way at a later point of time and on making slides making presentations. Now mind you interestingly the body and its language is something which is available to you at all points of time unless you are making a telephonic presentation in which case voice and the text that you are communicating through your voice are the only things available. So, you see that uh, you might have many occasions where you are asked to make a presentation just like that only with the help of your body and you need to be aware of the expressive qualities of your body in order to make a good presentation. On the other hand, when we are talking about the visual aids, very often they can go with or without your presence. For instance, the slides I am preparing may be shared with you, they are being shared with you and that is something where you find that I am not present over there. Strategically speaking, when you are making a presentation with your slides, your slides need to be relatively less expressive, less communicative in the sense that they should have less number of words, just bullet points and hints. Now, there is a reason for that. The reason being that if your slides are overloaded with content, then people will keep on looking at your slides. They will not have a chance to look at you, they will not have a chance to hear you because there is so much information on your slide. Reading the slide takes a huge amount of time. So, you see that it is a different ball game altogether, it is a different strategy altogether. So, I will talk about that in a moment. So, the first thing that we are going to focus on today is on non-verbal communication in the context of presentation. If you remember in some of my earlier lectures, I talked to you about uh, uh, the body and its significance in the context of uh, speaking skills, listening skills and all that, that you need to communicate these with your body through your gestures, your posture, your eye contact and all that. In the presentation context also, it is definitely similar. So, the things that we are going to do today would be focusing on body language, focusing on visual presentation and in that context, how to develop slides and PPTs. In fact, I have a separate PPT if you look down uh, this week's lectures, you will have slides. I have kept an entirely separate slide which in totally deals with colors, relationship of colors, font sizes, texts and so on. I will just show you a glimpse of that today, but you are supposed to take pursue that independently on your own okay? and respond to questions which come from that particular section. And then we will summarize the entire thing and I will show you the references. The references in any case will be there in your slides as well. Okay? So, body language and gestures, well what exactly are we talking about? Again an example from the Tintin comics, you tell me what do these two people convey to you? You might find uh, that uh, you have different uh, kinds of things to say about the two different people. When we do the body language uh, sessions, we will have series of a series of surveys to as identify how you tend to assess people, but that is that is going to be a different thing altogether you are coming in the next two weeks or so, but today this very simple question. Let us look at this image and let us look at this, this person and this person. Who seems to be the leader? The person in the orange shirt or the person that is the person on the left hand side or the person on the right hand side. If you look very closely, probably the majority of you will agree that this person seems to be the leader and this person seems to be the follower. Yes, why is it so? What is it in these gestures that you find uh, communicating this? They are laughing at something, that is the first thing that becomes very clear to us. They are enjoying a good laugh. One person is laughing by pushing his belly forward, okay, an aggressive stance, very often culturally considered as an aggressive stance. 
if you look closely you will observe that his uh, hands are tucked into his belt again an aggressive stance he is looking up he is frowning and uh, you see that uh, all these things and the empty bubble shows that he is the first person to speak if you are looking at the second person the second person he is leaning forward he is putting his hands on his stomach in order to communicate that his his, his belly he is having a belly laugh okay belly full of laughter as we call it and so he is holding on to his belly but he is leaning forward communicating a sense of slight subservience to the other person less aggression okay and uh, the neck jutting forward showing greater degree of interest now the point is that uh, there is something else also involved which is the dress code the person on the left hand side seems to be better dressed than the person on the right hand side now you see that uh, all these judgments all these assessments all these evaluations you generally make within a period of less than 10 seconds or even 5 seconds and you come to a conclusion you make an assessment about the people now imagine that every day of our lives we are meeting different people, we are seeing different people in different situations and we are making quick assessments about their personality, their attitude, their intentions and all that even without communicating with them directly through the non-verbal communication process. Now, if that is the case, obviously in the presentation context, body language, your appearance, your dress code, all these things are going to play a very significant role. Now, let me share with you the fact that uh, my students very often are asked this question by me that what was your first impression of me and they come up with something uh, which they share and you find that uh, whether it agrees with what they come to realize about me later on or not that is a different issue altogether. But the moment somebody is making a presentation and especially for the first time and to an audience which is unknown to her or to him you find that people start making an assessment of that person just on the basis of what he looks like or what he looks like, how she is dressed, how is her bearing and all that. And mind you here the gender element also is distinctively significant because uh, we will do that again in the context of presentation I will probably put in a survey if it is there you will just see it below your screen and there you will find out that in the presentation context even gender plays a significant role and different people okay, are assessed based on whether they are men or women in different ways. Now, you see that uh, Royola Bath, the French philosopher suggests that everything that you do in a socio-cultural context communicates significantly. Even the combination of food that you order in a restaurant sends a message about your taste, your status and personality and the way the moment you walk into a presentation the way you look the way you wear your spectacles the way you wear your shirts and trousers or skirt and sarees everything and the way you hold yourself together and speak not just the speaking part but the non-verbal gestures and postures that you hold they will communicate very distinctively different kinds of things so you need to be aware of these elements when you are making a presentation so, let us like a quick talk of how is it first impression, I was telling you a little earlier. So, you need to be aware of this, we very often neglect our appearance, but mind you whether it is neglected or whether we take care of it, our appearance is making a statement. Whether I am the first button of my shirt is open or whether I am cleanly saved or not, whether I have taken care, I have uh, put on a strong perfume, how I have brushed my hair back, what kind of colored sari or kurta you are wearing, all these things are making statements. So, how I walk, how my body is poised, how I establish eye contact or whether at all I establish eye contact or look at different other things without looking at the audience and the audience is very, very carefully making an assessment because mind you, the audience is always managing its own time. 
first question the audience is asking is that should I sit through the entire talk or should I go back earlier? Should I just smile and sit down for the first five minutes because somebody has asked me to come here and then slowly walk away or is this guy interesting enough to listen to for a long period of time? Now these things are very often decided by the first few moments. Okay. Whether people will listen to you, will take you seriously or not, will find you provocative enough can very often unfortunately be determined by your body language and hence you need to groom that to a certain extent when you are making a presentation. Face. There are a set of guidelines which are very generic, we are not talking about the facial features, we will do that later on. Communicate your sense of enthusiasm. Look interested, lean forward, okay. maintain eye contact generate interest in your face as well as in your voice, smile, okay. smile at your audience at whatever point of time it is possible because it is a wonderful way of establishing contact, reciprocity. If you are smiling at your audience and your audience smiles back, then what happens is that a reciprocity is uh, introduced. You are building up a bond and once that bond is established, then what happens is that you feel more comfortable. So, when you are smiling at the audience and the audience smiles back, you feel happy, you feel relaxed and it is you have a feeling that it is going to be a good presentation. If the audience does not smile back, well accept it, that is a different story altogether, but at least you have tried. Small groups, I contact individually, 5 people, 10 people, 20 people are in their class or in your presentation, look at each one of them individually when you are talking periodically so that nobody feels neglected. But if it is a large group, then look in blocks. So, if I might illustrate this point, what you are going to do is that you are dividing the entire class or the entire audience into zones. So, you find that let us say 100 people are sitting over here. How do you, how do you talk to them? So, what you do is you generically look in this direction, then you at this point, then you look in this direction then you look at this direction, then you come over here, then you come over here, then you come over here, maybe focus a little here and here. So, you see that you are establishing contact with 100 plus people or even 200 plus people. You are not looking at any particular person individually, you are looking at certain zones. But in the process, people feel that they are being observed, you are communicating with them, you are establishing eye contact with them. And this is very, very important in a presentation, large or small, because the audience should not feel left out, the audience should not feel that uh, you are not interested in certain groups of the audience and the audience, if it feels neglected, will also lose interest in you and start doing other things, maybe checking mails on mobile or playing a game, whatever sitting at the back because you are ignoring them, they are also those, those group of people, that group of people, those people are ignoring you as well. Posture, you see that uh, <coughs> these are some of the things which are pretty regular. They would communicate enthusiasm like not leaning on things because they can indicate a sense of needing support. When I lean on something, I need support, but of course, there are other ways of leaning on things. You can lean on things like this which would support, suppose, indicate arrogance and aggression. Well, we are not also talking about that. You can touch something lightly, you can put your hand on something lightly, that is a different thing. But do not lean heavily on things, do not take support of things heavily because either they would communicate a sense of arrogance or a sense of diffidence. Neither of them is good for a presentation. Do not be stiff, try to be relaxed. Very often I find my students not knowing where to put their hands. Okay whether they will put it inside their pockets, they will fold it across or they put it behind their backs as I have said with you earlier. And these are things which have become, which become very, very significant in the context of presentations. Try to forget about your body because once you do that, the body will become spontaneous and you will be able to communicate more effectively in a more relaxed way. Okay? Postures to be avoided, uh, taken this from uh, Allen and Barber Pease. And in the presentation, I will have it from the slides that I will share with you. I will have it from a wide range of other areas as well, 
but this is just to give you a quick idea that these can be postures that can be considered negative okay postures and facial expressions in a man this might be considered less arrogant because gender plays a role in a woman it may be considered more arrogant we will have to test it out crossing your legs generally to be avoided when you are making a presentation confidence or is it something else considered as aggression now this is something again you check the slides that I have shared with you which have a number of other images as well expressions best avoided are confounding uh, troublesome expressions like this or expressions which show diffidence or lack of confidence okay rubbing or uh, uh, scratching your neck or shuffling your uh, shirt which indicates that you are feeling hot and stiff and tensed very often you do not want your audience to know these things so you need to avoid this in the slides we will I will have a series of other images as well so now that we have talked about your body language we also need to talk about the body language of the audience because the audience is who you are talking to is the audience interested is the audience getting bored is the audience fidgeting around not feeling good moving around shifting communicating that uh, the the people the group the members there are not feeling comfortable or feel that it is a long boring session they want to go out of it what exactly are they doing you need to be very careful about that very often in classes I remember having terminated classes 10 or 15 minutes beforehand because I find a very fidgety audience maybe the lesson is tough maybe the presentation is complex and difficult and uh, maybe needs if they need a break in which case I give them a break and they come back and then we have a much better session these are things you will have to sense and you might shorten or lengthen your presentation depending on the nature of the audience behavior okay and this to a very great extent is assessed by the body language postures gestures eye contact whether they are maintaining or not yawning okay initially they will do it secretly but after a point of time they will want you to know that they are really getting bored and they will yawn in public now these are signs looking at the watches all kinds of things that you need to be very aware of and try to monitor because your essential focus is to communicate with the audience big or small right so audience response as I told you here again uh, I am taking from some of the images from Alan and Barbara Pease but later on in the slides you will find in a variety of other images as well so this is probably not a speculative uh, interrogative uh, critical of you could be bored telltale sign of boredom uh, attentive interested but making a decision judging you now you see that these are the set of things that you need to avoid when you are looking at the audience or rather if these things are there you know that the audience is not listening to you properly blank stares drooping eyes getting feeling drowsy no blinking eye blinking head in hands little eye contact crossed legs doodling doing something repetitive tapping bringing out their mobiles looking at their watches wide range of symptoms which say which communicate to you the condition of the audience and you need to be aware of these signs which means that you have to either stop or change your strategy of presentation make it interesting tell a story ask questions that is a very good way of getting the audience involved because now they know that they have to speak and unless they have listened it will be very difficult for them to speak so there can be as I told you a wide range of things but we take a pause over here and we move on to something else which is visual representation or presentation as I told you a little earlier at the beginning of this particular session visual presentation can either be in accompaniment with your presentation for instance my visual presentations are in accompaniment with my presentation they are very short and if one looks at those 10 or 20 slides he or she gets a little idea about what the entire topic is about but the major part of the topic is missing in the slides because the slide is a memory yet if you have listened to the talk and then you have gone back to the slide then you will remember it but if you are going to the slides right at the beginning the slides do not tell you much right so if that is the case you strategically develop your presentation accordingly 
but there are other cases where your presence may or may not be there where your slides have to communicate very effectively and there the presentations have to be detailed and mind you these presentations have to be read somebody is reading out these presentations to you or you are reading it out by yourself in the absence of the speaker and the speaker is not distracting you with his voice and various other components of the content. So, if that is the case you will present things in a different way. So, we will talk about uh, the basic elements layout, colors, images, clips and sounds, animation, text and uh, other components. So, what uh, we are talking about I will touch upon here in a very quick way because when we do visual aspects we will touch upon some of these ideas all over again. However, let me enlarge on these concepts very quickly. What is the layout? Layout is what you see right in front of the screen. You see that basic elements the title is written in bold it is at the center. The various bullet points are on the left hand side flushed aligned left. Okay. So, this is a layout if I want to have images I can always have them at the right top or as you can identify my image you can see at the right bot. Now, this is a basic layout. These layouts can be manipulated, but if I let us say have the uh, things in a different way let us say change the orientation. You can see my face on the left hand side of the screen and you can see the texts right aligned on the right hand side of the screen Maybe it may not be that comfortable. So, certain things are comfortable certain things are not you will have to test it out and the slide as I told you which I will so quickly show and share at the end tells you in a detailed way about all these things. Now, color is a very very deep field I would say and uh, color is something which uh, again I have said in the slide in detail, but there are colors which match which go together there are colors which do not. So, you need to be very, very careful some basic guidelines do not use too many colors. Images how to present images is something which you need to be very careful about where to present them where to place them. So, that they do not either become distracting or too dominating again something clips and sounds if you wish to you can have clips, but in most cases clicks and sounds are distracting unless they are absolutely required you do not use them because they kind of go against the grain of the presentation. If you are having an audio visual within your presentation embedded that is a different thing altogether you want to illustrate something by showing a movie or a cartoon or an animation or whatever that is a different thing. But generally clicks and other kinds of uh, things audio clips can be distracting and better to be avoided in presentations. Animation is again something which can be distracting we will just uh, quickly touch upon that and the text the font size for kind of how many how many different styles of fonts you should use within a presentation these should be very very carefully articulated. For instance, in my case you find that uh, although one of my core fields of specialization happens to be visual aesthetics, visual communication, visual arts, I tend to make my presentation very simple maybe for the very simple re same reason because I know that uh, it can have very complex implications I do not want to get into that. So, I keep it as simple as possible as standard as possible. For instance, in these presentations I am using for the title texts the font size of 36 bold and for most of my subtexts, which is the slide using a font size of roughly anything between 28 and 24. And if there are small texts absolutely required none of them go below 18 and they are not really meant to be read in a detailed way I am not supposed to I am not trying to catch your attention with those texts. So, this is the limits within which I stay. But let us say that you are making a presentation for people who will not be listening to you, but just looking at your slides maybe your fonts can be smaller there can be much larger amount of text within your presentation. So, keep a basic design standardization and innovation elements planning text and images are things which uh, for which I will give you some material as I have already promised and uh, you can look it up there. I have just told you the basics about the layout that you need to keep in mind. Colors foreground and background colors should not be having a very great amount of contrast because then it disturbs the eye illustrated in the slides that I am said. 
primary and secondary colors function in different ways generally tend to avoid primary colors. Primary colors are red, blue and yellow. Secondary colors are combinations like maybe green, different shades of green, oranges, browns and number of other colors. They are less bright, less subdued, they do not disturb you so much. So, use primaries very, very carefully and mostly prefers different mild uh, diluted sets of uh, secondaries again discussed elaborately in the slides because colors are linked to emotions as we will discuss in the uh, talk on visual pres visual communication. Colors have specific associations we have il already illustrated that in the earlier session and colors are linked to cultures. Now, here is an example of uh, what I am trying to share by uh, an example of uh, George Suez. Uh, painting known as the bathers. Compare this with this. Without elaborating much, I must say that uh, these two definitely convey different messages. The meanings are very, very different and uh, that is because of the colors used, the lines used, the textures used. I am not elaborating that, but they have a definite distinctive impact. Tables and graphs, images and illustrations, relating images and texts, images and symbolism and communicating with images are things which we will deal with elaborately in the slide where we discuss uh, in the presentation where we discuss multimedia and in the presentation where we talk about specifically about visual culture and communication okay. because that you will get to know how these things are used nonetheless very quickly. Tables and graphs make them colorful, but understandable. Images and illustrations should actually be illustrations, illustrate a point rather than taking center stage. Whenever you are talking, you relate them to the images specifically the way I have just done now or to the text which is there in case you feel that you are not going to make uh, an emphasis or the slides are going to be seen by somebody in your absence. Images do communicate uh, various things, uh, they can be symbolic also and very often in slides right at the beginning, let us say that you are making a presentation on justice or law and you find that in PPT uh, format in MS PPT you find that such images are there or you are making a presentation about let us say uh, environment and you have an image about environment right at the beginning of your presentation. So, this perform symbolic work functions and very often where it is possible communicate in as many ways as possible. I have already discussed that and said that when you do that your memory links are strengthened. So, communicate the same thing through image, communicate the same through same thing through your text, even through the points that you are making and that it becomes much more interesting. Clips and sounds as I have already said is uh, something which is to be avoided in most cases, but where they are required uh, clips and sounds are essentially tools for drawing your attention. So, keeping that in mind when you start you might have a particular sound and when you stop you might have a slightly different sound. Do not make these sounds very distinctive, do not make these sounds very obvious do not make these sounds very distracting. That is all I would like to share with you at this particular moment. An interactive sound is where you see that when you click you have make specific sounds best avoided in presentations, but if you are having it they must draw attention of the public or the audience at that particular point of time to that particular thing. So, animating a presentation very quickly animations generally are distracting as is seen here and they can be very, very irritating and create all kinds of clutters. Unless required, do not make anim animations or use animations which where things simply disappear and fade out and avoid the worst kind of animations jumping, bouncing, energetic animations unless they are absolutely required or they are presentations which are meant for let us say young people, kids where we want to make things playful or may be used just once in your presentation and never again. because animations as I told you is, are can be distracting to a very, very great extent much more distracting than sounds. 
So, again you see that um, these are examples of different kinds of animations and you, fi you can find that they are pretty irritating in some of the cases. So, basic do's and do not I have already said, the effects I have already indicated, how you order them you need to take care of that uh, and you can do that pretty easily. Uh, whether you want the earlier points to stay there or to disappear that you need to take care of. If you want that, if you want to refer to the earlier points within the same slide, then make them stay. If you do not want to refer to them, then you can make them disappear. So, you need, it, need to use animation strategically only when required and not at all other points of time. So, text as element of design as I told you is where there are like what we are talking about is typography. You have serif texts, you have sans serif texts. Serif texts are something like this uh, and where you have lines like if I am writing C, I have lines, I have T, I have lines and sans serif is where I do not have these lines. Now, they have the distinctive psychological impact on the mind, the, the proportion of uh, the length to the width, uh, the upper case to the lower case all have their relationship and their psychological impact. But as I told you some of these I have elaborated on my accompanying uh, presentation on slides and that is where I will discuss it. I have already discussed it as a presentation and you need to go through that presentation in order to make sense of it. So, linking presentations, um, hyperlinking one part of the presentation to the other part of the presentation. Uh, these are some of the things where I will recommend some books for you and recommend some sites for you and you can go there and find out how to do it. It is not possible to do the details of this within this sort of presentation. However, if you remember a little earlier I told you that slides can be detailed and this slide for example is much more detailed and has a lot of important points and uh, it shows certain relationships and very often even without my presence this particular slide manages to make sense or for the matter for that matter this where some images are there which perform certain symbolic functions rather than communicating directly and you again you find a lot of elements are there and obviously they perform the function of explaining the points in my absence or this one which is again the image performing a symbolic function where design components are there things are worked out in detail. But these slides again as I told you probably work better as a part of a brochure as a part of a presentation where the person is not there and in the absence of the, the speaker they still can be related in a distinctive way. And if you look at these you find that design components have been taken care of by me. I have tried to play around with uh, different kinds of compositions so that they look beautiful and harmonious. So, these are these are the strategies which we will discuss at a later point of time. But here we stop and as I told you uh, if you look down the slides there is a distinctive appended slide which is known as 7.1 to this particular as a accompaniment to this one uh, where you get to know about how to prepare slides through a series of presentations as a PDF document. So friends we stop here for today. Thank you very much.